Bokatov Chabrim, I'm Stephen Benun. You are watching Israeli News Live this morning. We're already getting uh, word out of Russia that the riddle to the TU-154 crash, the Russian uh, airliner that was carrying a military airliner, in fact, that was carrying uh, the entire uh, mil military uh, choir uh, that was going to be singing in Syria, as well as other passengers that have never really been disclosed to the Western media, and that was the there was a general on board, five colonels, and even from what I have gathered lately, that there was about a dozen chemical weapons inspectors on board this aircraft. Um, of course, there's many different, uh, from, from early on when we did our broadcast on there, there were many uh, experts that were claiming they do believe that this was taken down by an electronic, uh, radio electronic uh, attack on the plane. Uh, there was some belief that there was a French ship in the Black Sea that maybe, maybe had done this, that all the engines had ceased, according to one eyewitness. There's a lot of credible evidence, not just conspiracy theorists, but there's a lot of credible evidence that seemed to lean towards the possibility that this is not a pilot error, as according to the official report here. But it's in all... In all uh, uh, objectivity, we must disclose what the Russian government is saying and what they believe this to be. And according to the Russian report, and after, it says after a complete uh, decryption of the black boxes of the crash at the end of the December 2016 in the waters off of Sochi, the TU-154, that they believe that it was actually the co-pilot's error that caused the crash, along with the fact that they said that the plane was overweighted. Um, Al Alexander Ravine, uh, uh, they said that on the rise, possibly mixed the chassis control levers and flaps. When the crew noticed the mistake, it was too late. A heavy TU-154 simply did not have enough height for saving maneuvers. So he hit the water uh, at fuselage and collapsed. Uh, but this is just really in contradiction with uh, even the eyewitness account that couldn't physically see the plane. They could see the lights of the plane as it was going up, but they noticed that there was a sudden stop of the engines while it was still in flight. So that kind of begs to differ. I know one of the, um, uh, there was a colonel, a reserve colonel, who was on a talk show radio in Russia that we listened to the broadcast there, and he suggested that the plane may have been shot down. And of course, in his, uh, observation, he said, what seems strange about this whole incident is that, that the plane never radioed back for, uh, to let the, the tower know they were having trouble. And of course, the Russians are saying it's because it wasn't really enough time to do anything like that. But there was time for someone to put on a life jacket as they went down. So it really kind of uh, begs to differ. And they also speak about there being a 12 square mile uh, area of wreckage and how the plane broke completely apart. Again, doesn't seem to line up with the narrative that there was just a flap problem and the plane went down. How many planes have we seen go down in America that hit the water and still pretty much intact even after it hits the water? So it is a little bit uh, odd in my opinion. I, I do kind of wonder if maybe Russia is not trying to um, bring this in a different light just to kind of save face, not to reveal maybe what really happened. Uh, but there again, maybe it was pilot error. So I do want to uh, certainly respect the decisions of, the, of the, uh, those uh, specialists that were deciphering the black boxes. It says, according to another one, says here, according to the expert, this could have happened after the co-pilot, 33-year-old Captain Alexander Rovno, instead of landing gear flaps, retracted. I do apologize. It actually, I thought it was the other guy here, that uh, Ravine, that the Alexander Ravine, but it's not. It's actually saying that it was um, uh, the blame is what they believe it to be on. Um, let me get back to this guy's name, Alexander Rovno. Instead of landing gear flaps, retracted from this plane passed into beyond the angle of attack. The crew tried to turn the car to make it to the ground, but uh, do not have time to uh, the source added on this. As it turned out, the situation worsened overload a TU-154 luggage compartment. It was filled to capacity. The tail section of the aircraft pulled down and uh, saved the car. It was impossible to not have enough speed and altitude. The according to this. So, you know, maybe it does make sense. Uh, I'll try to get with Gary Skogubo, a good friend of mine who is a veteran pilot in the United States, and see his opinion on this as well. And maybe we could have him on as a guest to talk about this event here. I'm Stephen Benoon. You're watching Israeli News Live. Shalom.